It's time for another Retro Shelf video today. We have Bill Hurd, Back Into the Storm, a design engineer's story of Commodore computers in the 1980s, co-written with Margaret G. Morabito, and on the cover we have the Commodore 116, the Commodore C16, the Commodore C128, the BOS 4, and the C128D. And so Bill Hurd worked at Commodore Business Machines in the 1980s and was the lead hardware engineer on the Plus 4 and C128 hardware. This was a time when the home computer wars were at their height and Commodore was at its pinnacle. Join him on a stormy journey as he recounts inside stories about designing computers for Commodore, the most prolific maker of home computers, such as the top-selling C64. For the five-month period that it took to get a computer from paper to the all-important consumer electronics show, Bill and his team lived, breathed and ate everything dealing with how to get their computer done. They added features when they thought they were good ideas and did their best to dodge bad ideas that were thrust at them by middle managers. It was a time when a small group of people could make big decisions quickly. They beat the odds, pulled off a thing or two previously not thought possible, and paid out some skin along the way. They were the group of engineers known as the Animals. And there are more than a few stories to tell. So, as I say, co-written Margaret, I do love the uh, little disclaimer in the front saying none of this is real. They in fact are in fact the ravings of a madman and should not be taken seriously. Dedicated to his son Joel. Acknowledgement of trademarks. A preface from the author. And so he tells the story in his own way. Going through how various things. Introduction. Talking about who he is, getting started. He thought he blew his interview. But he started muttering hex values for assembly under his breath. And that clinched it. Talks a bit about Commodore. Jack Trammell there. The people he met when he first moved into Commodore on his first day. His first week. How he ended up being made head of the TED text editing device project, which is the chip in the heart of the Plus 4 and C16. Early work on TED. It talks about the family, so that's a C232 prototype. Never released in that form. The C116. And you can see similar designs. How to add a reset switch to the TED schematic. Bill came in, added it with a single chip which in theory broke Jack Trammell's limit, but he got it done. The C116 PCB inside there, a wire-wrapped board, so this is early in making it, talking about the problems with the chips. The C264 prototype, which became the plus four. How he hired Dave Haney, talking about Westchester, Bill Hurd and Judy Braddock, Andy Finkel, Hedy Davis, Callum Shepner from Commodore there. About a trip to Japan and how things were different over there. Fixing things. There's an Easter egg hidden on the plus four with the names of the team. It's a simple SYS command. Talking about getting back. Talking about Ted Alpha. And the Winter CES. Consumer Electronics Show is where Major machines were launched, the Commodore 64 was launched, obviously in January 1982. And they're talking about booth and getting checked into a hotel, making sure things were working during the demonstration. And how one software developer, she was unhappy that the Plus 4 and the C16 would not be compatible with the Commodore 64 hardware. And that was a key issue for Bill. The different drive they put on, the different interface which made it faster, than the 1541, but not there. And you needed a different plug, so it doesn't, again, not directly compatible. And also talking about the LCD computer, more peripherals for the TED range, the joystick and the printers there. How they had a prototype. This is not the final case, but uh, it would have been the 364 we were talking, but. Here we're now talking about some of the pranks and strange things that happened. 
how he nearly hit a program. I've made a hole in the wall. Some of CES. Still showing TD machines. And how, unfortunately, the LCD that Commodore was working on would have been a portable. They had pioneers with the LCD screens working at Commodore, but that machine would ultimately be cancelled. And now we start to talk about the C128, the Commodore 128, and how the early concept was that it would have a new 128 mode, but have backwards compatibility. Marketing started promising it would be 100% compatible. They weren't certain they could achieve it. How we ended up with the C128 and the C128D, and then the later DCR, the cost-produced version that was sold in America. A block diagram here. This is quite interesting of how the chips and parts of the machine work together. And early on, they were using prototype PCBs with chip emulators, so they didn't have the final chips from MOS Technologies, the subsidiary of Commodore. And he also talks about how he used cartridges from the C64 to test the C128 to see if they're working properly. The Koala Painter software failed, so they had to include the original C64 font to get it to work. The keyboard based on a on a DEC terminal. Prototype of the 157 disk drive with its new burst serial to go faster. How he made a small change to the chip and positioned it at an unusual angle. Talking about the various chips that were needed to make the C128 work. How he made a mistake and took an existing chip. Then, of course, there comes the Z80 and the CPM mode included in the C128. It wasn't working when they put the C64 CPM cartridge in. So they said, well, why not put the Z80 cart chip inside? And so when it first starts up, The Z80 process actually starts up first and checks for particular cartridges, C64 cartridges. If that's not working, then it, there, then they tr transfers to the uh, the other processor, the main, the 8, 8510. So again, talking about how to fix problems, problems with the scrolling register, how something like International Soccer wasn't playing cor correctly, sparkle problems, so just disturbance on the display and how they could make decisions quickly as a team rather than going through managers. How the hole in the wall story is intriguing. It's how security locked his door, he punched a hole in the wall, hit the switch to open the door. They locked it again. He just reached through. It's a crazy story and part of the fun. And how uh, the manager once told him to get out, take a rest, and then come back. Some more of the problems I was still having in the build-up to showing the C128 for the first time. Breaking into a manager's office. And they'd advertised 512k expansion of memory. Manager changed their mind, and so they had to then fix it again later. And then this is the booth at uh, the Vegas CES in early 1985. How they got kept things running during the demonstration, how there was even a flaw with the CPM, and because of the change in the font and the change in the chip, the uh, programmer had to change something directly at the show by changing, physically changing bytes on the disc, which is incredible, talking about other booths at the show and how he was tuning power supplies as they need it. And also interesting story in that as well about how they included a fuse that the user could change for the first time. And then in finishing the Commodore 128, how they got things ready, how they got it through FCC testing, how things were going wrong. And again, we have the Easter egg, SOS 32800, 123,45,6 on the Commodore 128. And it gives you the name of the software and the hardware people involved. And it says, link arms, don't make them, which is a 
lovely sentiment and a wire they needed to do to fix something and as he says it was the last 8-bit computer what didn't happen but talking about the LCD again there on a lighter note some strange things that happened how a manager didn't understand how important the Amiga Genlock was nearing the end and his decision to leave he talks about some of the people who had a lasting effect in his life and this is the famous C128 Animals 1985 CES Dave Haney t-shirt they had made for them Bill Heard there hanging out and I love the glossary at the back here it's full of interesting terms and there's some humour in there as well and it really helps understand some of the slang and ideas that Bill puts across in the book and I actually found myself laughing at a couple of places at that so that's really cool and some final pictures and a picture of Margaret back in the 80s and 90s she was working on Run magazine talking about the computers that Bill designed and apologies for that slight interruption there and about Bill Hurd so another great book for the collection fascinating for Commodore fans looking at these machines and how they were made so comment below do you have one of these machines that Bill help produce like and share subscribe and i'll see you in the next video